Okay, so now our coming topic is regarding cyclostomes and Pisces. Okay, so from the previous year question paper, there is a question asking like, what is the taxon of Pisces? Pisces will come under superclass. Remember this, this is very important thing. Pisces will come under superclass. Okay, so how, uh, what is cyclostomes? What is fishes? Let's get differentiated these things. Okay, so we'll go with the topic. So the animals, uh, the every story now it got started with chordata. So chordata, okay. So the chordata is being divided into, the chordata is the phylum. Okay. So now the chordata is being divided into two things. Non-vertebrates. And vertebrates. So non-vertebrates are of, again, uh, we call it as protochordates. And this protochordates consists of two things. So one is uh, eurochordata. And other one is cephalochordata. And vertebrata. So now this vertebrata is being divided into two categories. Agnatha means no jaws. And next is nathostomata. Having jaws. Nathostomata. And this gnathostomata is again have two divisions. Uh, one is Pisces, which is fishes. And next is tetrapoda. Okay. So under Agnatha, you will be having cyclostomes. One division, which is uh, one class, which is cyclostomes. And this Pisces and tetrapoda will come under superclasses. And Agnatha and Gnatha are the divisions of vertebrate. Okay. And under Pisces, you have chondroictis, I'm writing it like short, and osteoictis. Under tetrapoda, you will be having amphibians, reptiles, aves, mammals. Okay, so now we are going to differentiate between cyclostomes and fishes. And very interestingly, cyclostomes will be having uh, anadromous and ketadromous. What is this anadromous? Anadromous is nothing but uh, moving from river, oh, sorry, moving from ocean to river for spawning, for spawning purpose, to spawn. And what is catadromous? Moving from river to ocean, back. So actually, uh, this a thing will be anadromous. The adult will go to the river for spawning after laying eggs. There it will, they will die. So afterwards, the larva will be again uh, uh, come back to ocean again. So this it will be seen in cyclostomes. So let's see. So we all know you uh, chordata or craniata. You chordata or craniata. So which is actually the higher chordates, which is having head, vertebral column, jaws, and cranium. So coming to the part of subphylum vertebrata, this is actually subphylum vertebrates, subphylum, non-vertebrates, and uh, this is subphylum. This taxon is subphylum, and agnatha and nathostomata are divisions. Okay? And coming to these, these are completely or partially, the notochord is being replaced by vertebral column. And vertebral column also consists of many vertebrates. And it consists of bone, cartilage, and uh, the head part, the brain is covered by cranium. Okay. And prominently, the head will be very well developed and it has complicated brain. And nerve, nerve cord will be enclosed in vertebral column. Okay. And uh, we have a single or paired nostrils will be there. And two to three semicircular canals will be there in the ear. 
and the animals are unisexual. So because unisexual or we otherwise call it as dioecious. And the subphylum vertebrata is being divided into two categories, agnatha and gnathostomata. So we'll go with agnatha. Agnatha, which is jawless. So jaws are absent for this. Notochord is uh, present persistent. Mouth will be in the end and the mouth will be suctorial. So teeth will be there all over. You will be finding teeth and mouth is suctorial. And these are sanguivorous. Sanguivorous in the sense they will suck blood. And mostly these are the parasites. And uh, the paired appendages are absent. You don't have any paired appendages. Operculum is absent. Scales are absent. And unicellular mucus producing glands are there. No exoskeleton is there. And a single nostril. So that's why we call it as monorhynchus. So monorhinus. And cold-blooded. So fishes are cold-blooded. Likewise, this agnatha is also cold-blooded. You can't find any genital ducts. And uh, the fertilization is external. And we have two semicircular canals. One pineal gland will be there on the lateral side of the head. And uh, we have again uh, two classes, but one class only is living. So that class is living class is cyclostomata. Cyclostomata. Even it can suck our blood also. Cyclostomata. Uh, you can see these are mostly marine. And except some freshwater species are there. These are actually parasites and scavengers because this will, uh, will suck the blood from dead and decaying organisms also. These are called jawless or false fishes. So the body will be long, thin, tubular and the mouth is rounded and because it is actually sucking like, not like uh, biting and eating type. And the skin will be very soft and eel-like body will be there. Remember, eel is actually osteoichthys, bony fish. And the internal ear will be having two semicircular canals and statoreceptors only will be present in the internal ear. And gill clefts will be there, around 6 to 15 pairs of gill, uh, gills are there, gill pairs. 15 pairs of gills. And you have the digestive system that is uh, uh, without stomach. And intestine will be having a spiral typhlosol. And notochord and vertebral column, both are present. So you can see both. Cranium and vertebral column is made up of cartilage. So you can see the... Okay. So you can see... So you can see it is cartilaginous in nature and the heart is venous heart and you can't find any bones. The kidneys are protonephric and mesonephric. Protonephric and mesonephric. Parrot fins are absent. So you have one dorsal median fin and tail fin is present. And uh, if we call it as uh, proto-circle, because uh, you call uh, the cartilaginous fish for hetero homo circle and bony fishes, you will be having hetero-circle thing. Okay, when it comes to here, the notochord will be extending till last end of the tail. And the tail fin is actually divided into two equal dorsal and ventral lobes. So notochord will be there till the extension of tail. They migrate to the freshwater for spawning and they get die there actually. The larva will be returned back to the marae for after metamorphosis. And animals are unisexual. Fertilization is external. So the larval stage is absent. It is not larva, the babies will come back. And you have two things, two examples. One is petromyzon. Well, petromyzone, you have larva. 
because this will go for spawning what i told you anadromous and catadromous will be there so the larva will be for this is amocytia larva amocytia larva for petromyzon and uh, we otherwise call this as lamprey lamprey and uh, we have mixin hackfishes so petromyzon is actually considered as a living fossil because it has uh, more uh, ancient characters and this acts as an ectoparasite sanguivorous on true fishes so many teeth are found in the mouth and it shows anadromous migration marine to fresh water and it has amocytae considered as a connecting link between cephalochord data and cyclostomes amocytae larva and when it comes to the hagfish we call it as wrinkled lips of old women that is uh, hagfish and uh, it will be attached to the gills of the host so the nephron we call it as archenephric kidney so which can filter blood and coelomic fluid as well okay so these are the two best examples for cyclostomes and remember the amocytae larva this has been asked many times and hagfish uh, lips of old wrinkled lips of an old woman okay these are the things and next uh, we'll go with uh, fishes fishes will comes under uh, gnathostomata and fishes is the super class so we'll go with the fish so when it comes to the pisces super class pisces so pisces uh, from devonian period uh, we call it as the golden era golden period of fishes actually the study of fishes we call it as ichthyology and it include true fishes fresh water as well as marine so the body will be long boat shaped and you can see the streamlined body we will be having head trunk and tail neck will not be there for fishes and slimy glands will be present on the skin the body will be covered by uh, uh, scales dermal scales but uh, if you see the catfish catfish will not have any scales and we have the torpedo which is cartilaginous fish that also will not have the scales and uh, valago valago also will not have the scales and the color of the fish is mainly produced by iridocytes so iridocytes are present on the dermis region and we have paired fins for swimming we have pectoral fins pelvic fins and we have unpaired fins also mid dorsal fin and caudal fin and two nasal uh, uh, two nares will be there that's why we call it as dirhinus but uh, cyclostomes will be monorhinus external and middle ears is not there and internal ear will be having three semicircular canals and eyes will be there but without eyelids fishes will not have eyelids respiration will be by gills four to seven pairs there six to 15 pairs here four to seven pairs and covered or not covered by operculum because chondroichthyes is not covered by op operculum osteoichthyes is covered by operculum air bladder will be present for bony fishes air bladder will be absent for cartilaginous fishes heart is two chambered so we call it as venous heart because the heart will be pumping the impure blood to gills gills will perform the purification and distribute the blood to remaining organs so the circulation we call it as unicircle and the coming to the rbc which is nucleated sinus venosus renal hepatic portal system these things are found in circulatory system endoskeleton may be bone or cartilage and vertebrates uh, in vertebrae in fishes are amphiceles means you can find the centrum will be concave on both surfaces and only one occipital condyle is present so the skull is monocondyle cranial nerves are actually 10 pairs we have 12 pairs they have 10 pairs lateral line system will be seen for bony fishes you can't see for uh, cartilaginous fish kidneys are mesonephric and cartilaginous fishes will excrete urea and uh, marine fishes will usually excrete trimethylamine oxide and freshwater fishes will secrete uh, ammonia actually urinary bladder is actually absent you can't find any urinary bladder fishes are unisexual you can differentiate the male and female for example if you go with sharks you can differentiate male will be having claspers female will not have the claspers 
uh, and fertilization is internal as well as external. Chondroichthyes will be usually internal. Osteoichthyes will be usually external. And the next thing is eggs are mesolecithial or megalithal. Yolk will be bigger. Extra embryonic membranes are absent. You can't find any uh, extra embryonic membrane. So an amniota. Development is direct. There is no any larval stages for fish. They are cold-blooded, poikilothermic. So exception is uh, tuna fish. Tuna fish uh, is endothermic. And the small fishes, we call it as hatchlings. And fishes, so seasonal migration, we already have seen. Anadromus, catadromus. Anadromus is from seawater to freshwater. Catadromus is from freshwater to marine water. Anadromus, uh, you can see for uh, salmon. Sturgeon, which is the costliest caviar. And uh, Hilsa, these are anadromous. And catadromous is Anguilla. Anguilla. And uh, we have the three classes, Placodermy, Chondroichthyes, Osteoichthyes. Okay. So we are going to cover about these uh, in detail in coming videos. Thank you very much.